Welcome to the Space Station Flight Control Room. We have joining us remotely from the Ames Research Center, Mark Murbach, who is the principal investigator for one of the experiments that went up to the space station on board the Cygnus. It's a satellite technology demonstration uh, project, and he's going to tell us a little bit more about that. So I think you are the principal investigator for TechEdSat4. What exactly is the investigation? It's a multi-purpose project, really. At the first order is that we're trying to develop some technologies and the thermal physics of bringing samples back from the space station. Uh, and in particular, our, one of our end goals is to bring back something of, about this size, if I, you can see it, um, this beautiful sculpture, actually. Uh, it's a real protoflight object back from the ISS, and it would carry out uh, small samples uh, that we would thermally control and be able to bring on a on-demand kind of process. So a part of that larger effort is called Small Payload Quick Return, or SPQR, which is a historical acronym also. So the, the idea is to be able to send small samples from the space station back down to Earth? That's correct. Okay, why, why would we so need to do the that? Um, so, uh, the space station has become one of our important field centers. It, the field center, we, NASA has numerous field centers. This one now is in orbit, along with our international collaborators. And, um, and so, we, we've solved the up mass problem. We, we take a lot of cargo up, but there's a lot of experiments that we would like to be able to get down uh, from the space station on a on-demand or a more frequent uh, uh, opportunity. We are very, very fond of our space station and the crew, obviously, so we had to come up with a, a safe means of doing this. So um, when you typically deorbit something from, from orbit, you, you typically use a, a sm small rocket to do that. Um, however, we certainly would not put a small rocket inside the space station and have it processed because of the obvious safety implications. So we had to rub our chins a little bit, and so the idea was to come up with a drag device to do that. And it's, it's not obvious how we might do that. And it turns out that uh, uh, even at that altitude, 350 to 400 kilometers, there's a very tenuous atmosphere. And so if you construct a drag device um, uh, such that it, uh, for every kilogram you have a, a square meter of, of drag area, you can actually deorbit something in, in a few days. So we started to study that and then ask, okay, how do you do this? How do you practice? How do you do this? So that was part of the genesis of the, the tech it's has, building small CubeSat objects that actually eventually build to a larger capability and at the same time doing some very interesting thermal physics. Okay. So this is a sample, this is a sandwich of, uh, of our exobrick device. The exobrick is the substitute rocket, the drag device that will bring things back from orbit, eventually on demand. And so this is a, a, one of a numerous materials, but it's a sandwich ob object. You can see it, it's quite pliable. We can, we can fold it, et cetera. And it's uh, subject to high temperatures also. Uh, and so this is what we're experimenting with. This is the fabric of the exobrake that we have on TechSat 3 and 4. So basically, we started with a, a CubeSat uh, that also has wonderful, not only technological, but also educational uh, aspects to it uh, that I'm very excited about. And eventually, we can evolve this into what we call a three-unit or three-liter uh, satellite, which is this size. So our tickets at uh, three, four, and five, for example, would, would be uh, made of this blank. And so we also experimented with uh, ways of making these cheaper. This is a, an extrusion. So we water jet it, and um, we, we build it up in a cartridge. We put the exo brake on one side, and uh, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. And, and so I work with a group of semi-gray beers, as I can call myself, and uh, my, my team, and also a lot of graduate interns uh, from lo local and uh, distant universities. So it's also the educational aspect is, is uh, also what makes it a lot of fun. So this is really a skunk works. We do rapid proto-flight now in a, in a very safe manner, and we test the heck out of these things, but it's, uh, the whole process is very interesting. It, it sounds like it. So how exactly, now that it's at the space station, what happens? How do you test it? So the uh, sequence, or as we call it, CONOPS, the concept of operations is as follows. <clears throat> so um, once our device jettisons from the space station, and I should have mentioned, this is also very exciting, working with our, our, um, uh, our um, colleagues at NanoRacks, a local uh, Texas firm, uh, we're now able to uh, actually uh, eject 48 of these things, or its equivalent, uh, per airlock cycle, which is great, okay? And it turns out that we are launching a bunch of these also. So when, when it comes to uh, our turn, we, we get launched from the, uh, the, uh, the ISS. It gets processed through the gym airlock, our uh, colleagues from, um, from uh, JAXA. And then um, 
what happens is that this uh, gets very carefully launched in a particular orientation and direction because we don't want to hit the solar panels on our highly esteemed uh, dear space station, right? So we, this idea. has to be pointed properly. And then uh, basically the onboard timer kicks on. It uh, counts on its fingers to th uh, 30 minutes. And then the, uh, the communication systems turn on, okay? Then we're, we begin to listen for that. And then for this particular experiment, um, we will we'll wait for several orbits and we'll send an uplink command via email uh, and the, the uh, command will be received and at, at that point the exo brake will be deployed and it will stop tumbling, it will settle in orientation and it will begin its deorbit in the next uh, uh, several weeks in this case. And then are you able to retrieve it and on the ground? Not yet. Um, okay. So we would like to do that eventually. We're taking uh, small incremental steps to do that to make sure that uh, our techniques are evolving. So uh, tech us at five, the number five that's coming up, for example, will be the same size, um, but this will, again, have more advanced communication and control, and we'll have a device that actually we can expand and contract a little bit so that actually we can steer this through the atmosphere, targeting a particular location at the von Karman altitude, or about 100 kilometers, right at the very top of the atmosphere. Well, sounds like a really interesting project to be working on. We will be watching out for it um, to, to get started here on the space station for the next round when about I think did you say a couple weeks from now or um, we were listening in our teleconference today and it probably it, it depends on the, all this the, the scheduling so there's a lot of scheduling that goes on with the uh, the, the space station of course um, and so it probably looks like uh, maybe the end of August when the first batch of these things will first come out okay we'll definitely watch for that so, thanks so much for joining us and we will too Thank you, Brandy. I sure appreciate the invitation. We appreciate you talking to us. Again, this was Mark Murbach, who is the principal investigator for the TechEd Sat 4 on board the space station, just arrived on uh, the Cygnus cargo vehicle. Thanks so much.